Hey there viewers, welcome back to Railroad Trades. We are working on a steel 023 today, regular used condition. Oh, red lever. The complaint was that it just starts running kind of rough. It'll kind of bog out like he's running it. And next thing you know, it starts running out of gas, it feels like. And it'll shut off on him when he comes back to idle. Then he literally does nothing other than give the cord a rip and she'll fire right back up. And it seems, sounds to me like it's running out of fuel based on his description. I don't remember his exact scenario, but it sounded like it was running out of fuel to me. He said it'll start up, it'll do everything it's supposed to do, but it just keeps running out of fuel. So what I noticed when, uh, when he was here, I took off that cover and I started looking close to this area right here. It was all wet and it was riding around in a truck on the way here on its side. And sure enough, when I looked at it, the fuel line just has a giant crack in it. It looks like it's worse right now than what it was. I don't know if that's because it's been sitting here for a few days and had an opportunity to expand, contract, whatever. But but yeah, the fuel line has a big old hole in it. So we're just going to swap out that fuel line. He said everything else runs like it's supposed to. We're going to start there changing out that fuel line and see if that's our only problem. So we're going to try to change out that fuel line with minimal disassembly. So let's drain the fuel out of it and see what we can do to get that fuel line snaked in there without having to, if we can get away with not having to pull the whole thing apart. It's kind of funny when he first dropped it off that that hole is nowhere close to the size you guys are seeing. And I don't know if it's because it's been sitting in my uh, warm garage I, shoot, I don't know. I don't know what caused it, uh, but it's got a giant hole in it now. Obviously, it was a small enough hole that he could run it most of the time. So that, that gives you an indication of how how rapidly things can you know, transpire. Just to make this easier so you guys can see, we're going to pull off this carburetor. I'm, can, I'm pretty convinced that I could pull off this fuel line right here, just like that, from the carburetor. And straight down through this hole right here, it goes down to the tank and stabs through the tank. And I think with enough um, swearing at it, I probably could get it to go. So just to show you that I could get it out. And then what we're going to do is, is uh, I'm going to give you guys some room so that you can see what I'm doing. So let's pull out this fuel filter real quick. Okay. And then that fuel line, I just pushed up. I'll, let me show you here in just a second. So there's my fuel line, it has the hole in it. There's the crack right there. So you see, I didn't have to take anything apart. And if I was careful, I could sneak the new one down, pull down on it and, and stab it into place. Just wanted to prove that it could be done. Let's go ahead and get this off of here, the carburetor, so that we can look down in there and I can hopefully get a better shot with the camera. Like I said, when he dropped it off, I just pulled the cover and immediately I saw all kinds of wetness in here. A little bit more than what you normally see. You always see just a little bit just because of a, it's a dirty chainsaw, right? But this was just more than usual. Let's pull the choke out the way. Gotta get my throttle disconnected. On this style, just push the throttle forward and lift up this arm right here. And then where I disconnected the fuel line from was right there. And where it routes is straight down through that hole right there. That large hole right there. Let's see, does this help? 
If I shine it through there, can you see the hole any better? All right, let me find a fuel line and let's get this thing reassembled. Okay, bad news. All of the uh, fuel lines that I had were for a different model. Um, this one actually has a larger grommet down here than what a lot of the other ones do. So I ordered one and I'm hoping to have it tomorrow and uh, I'll bring you guys back then. Hey y'all, uh, welcome back. Went to order the fuel line for this thing. It was actually about the same exact price to go with a, a HIPAA 023 kit, which is the same as the MS250, uh, several others. So, yeah, I, it was, I think it was maybe a little bit more. I wanna say this was closer to like the 12 or $15 mark, something like that, where when I went to go just get this fuel line, it was about uh, $9 by itself with shipping. And it, of course it comes with a new carb and primer and air filter, the whole nine yards. I'm gonna take this bucket apart, put it over here for later. For the next 23 or 250 that comes in that needs some carb parts or possibly even a carburetor. Okay, compare them up one for one. Same part, obviously, right? Same keyway, same everything. What we're gonna do, we're gonna push this down through this hole and we're gonna guide it. Let's put a flashlight in there. See that hole? So we're just gonna push this down through there and then this cone shape on this uh, fuel line, this grommet, should push down through that hole. And we can use a screwdriver to work on pushing on this surface right here, you know, right here on this edge to feed it down into place. We can also reach in and grab it with a, a soft pair of pliers or something to pull down while we're doing the same thing. But the idea is we want to be careful that we're not hurting this part of the line and this part of the line. This part is pretty robust. So we're just cheating the system a little bit. We don't have to take off the fuel tank to get this done. And it's actually even a lot faster if I wasn't trying to, you know, push things to allow you guys to see what's going on. So if you just had it on your bench, it could actually, you could, you could have been done by now. All right. And then looking down from the bottom, you can see it sits something like that. Okay. I'm just going to gently push all the way around with a nice wide flathead screwdriver. And you can just check your work. Like right now, I don't know if y'all can see it. The, the front side of the grommet is all the way in. The back side is like 80% of the way in. So I'm just gonna focus on that area. While looking through the hole. And there she goes. Just like that. I'm just focusing on that grommet. I'm drawing this repair way out. Like I said, you could be done with this repair a whole lot faster than what I just described. I just wanted to show you the process. Just make sure that that fuel filter has the opportunity to, you know, float around inside there, fall down as necessary. This part is trash. Cover it up for now. You want to inspect this gasket right here. This, this mating surface, that is what's gonna seal up against this mating surface right here. There's a metal plate right here that can go on next. There's a gasket between there and then there's the carburetor. Pull that fuel line out of the way so you don't hit it with anything. Should be able to slide it on. Put our fuel line in place. If you notice, I'm grabbing this really thick end down here as opposed to grabbing that ribbed area. And just push it all the way on. Now, what I've seen several times in the past is when this gets put on, sometimes there'll be a really tight kink here. And that just means that something's not routed properly or that the part that you got, the aftermarket part or whatever, wasn't 
it was manufactured too short or something like that. Because if this line was shorter and you tried to shove it on there, it might pinch this line. Anyway, that line can't be pinched. That's your fuel line into the carburetor. Make sure that visibly looks like a nice, easy slope. It's a rare occurrence, but I've seen it happen and I've had to adjust for it using some, some aftermarket parts. They're not all the same. I know a lot of people automatically say, hey, yeah, it's aftermarket, so it's junk. I'm not one of those people. If there's a leak in something, it can change. It can change the tune. But realistically, what's this thing doing? All it's doing is giving a metered amount of fuel into the cylinder. So realistically, I could take a pull the carburetor completely off. And if I had some magical way of using a spray can of carb cleaner, which bad idea because it's a two stroke. But if I had some magical way of injecting fuel into this thing, I wouldn't even need a carburetor, right? The carburetor's job is to try to get that uh, stoichiometric uh, ratio, the 14.7 to one into the cylinder. That's its job, right? It's, it's nothing magical. So um, aftermarket or not, if you can get that amount of fuel in and you can adjust to allow the certain amount of air to fuel ratio, and it maintains the same, which is what a lot of people complain about. They say it doesn't maintain, it changes on them. And that could happen, right? I mean, loose seals, bad um, uh, membranes in there, bad, I mean, it could happen. But I don't have the same problems where I have to buy 12 to get two to work. I, I don't have those problems. Usually, when I put one in and I tune it, it usually holds. Now, keep in mind, most of my customers are friends and weekend warrior cutters, they are not professional loggers. So I can understand the difference. I'm also not a steel authorized dealer. I can understand why those guys have to use OEM parts. They don't want to have something come back on them and then all of a sudden their name gets trashed because somebody's opinion said it was because of X, Y, and Z. All that to say, use whatever you want, adjust it. If you adjust it and it keeps changing on you, then you need to replace something, right? These things should not automatically adjust on their own. Not these manual style carburetors, they should not adjust on their own. If it's adjusting on its own, you've got a different problem. You've either got a seal leak down here, you've got a seal leak at the base gasket, you've got a seal leak at your decompression valve, your spark plug gasket, your uh, carburetor diaphragms, uh, gaskets, uh, in, uh, impulse line, you've got a leak somewhere. And so the leaks are what changes um, and causes them to run rich, causes them to run lean, things like that, depending on what leak it is. I know, soapbox time, it's over. Get the throttle line put back on. Can I sneak it in there after the fact? There is a hole way up in the carburetor. Come on. Man, I'm getting old. But yeah, you want to you want to cause a bunch of a uh, heartache on the internet, make yourself TikTok famous, whatever you want to call it. You know, start making claims about which part's just as good as the other one. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to fix stuff, give it back to my customers, friends, family, whatever, and um, give these things a little more time here on this here on this lovely planet Earth. So the throttle rod, it was a hole up here on the throttle. Just make sure that when you're hooked up and snap back in, that A, the trigger won't work without pressing the dead man. So press the dead man, then move the trigger. Make sure that it moves that throttle valve inside there and it springs back like it's supposed to. Something feels bound up, it probably is, and you need to look at it. So it should be just as smooth as when you took it apart. So put that back on. And this back on. I'll try to look up the torque setting on those two bolts. 
I do it by feel. If I can find the torque setting, since it is metal thrown to plastic, I'll try to post it in the video. Between the last time you guys saw me and today, I've worked on uh, several other items and waited for parts to show up. So I don't remember if I covered this. The only thing that we've changed on this saw is that fuel line. And based on what the customer said about how it feels like it's running out of fuel, and then when I pulled the cover off, it was all wet here. And then I let it sit for a couple of weeks. Sorry about that, Charlie. When I came back, the tear had opened up much larger. A lot of the fuel had evaporated, things like that. So, and I'm not positive why it opened up further than when I first saw it. When I, when I first saw it, it was a very, very small hole. I actually had to put a flashlight into it and we both looked with glasses to see where the you know little pinhole was. But when you guys saw it, it was a giant tear. So it didn't take much, you know, it just dried up whatever else. So had he seen that, he probably wouldn't have driven a couple hours to come see me, you know, cause he could have popped that line in relatively quickly as you guys saw. Total repair time on this, uh, if I got rid of all the BS, what, five minutes? You know, snap a new line in there if you had one. So fill it back up. I know the video is much longer than that. Cause I like hanging out with you guys. So let's make sure that all of this still works. All we got to do now is fuel it up, give it a try and make sure that it holds a tune and that it works like it's supposed to. It's going to take me a few cuts to make sure that that occurs. Then we'll give it back to them. All right. There she goes, Steel 023. Easy fuel line replacement. Hope y'all got something out of the video. Really appreciate you hanging out. I'll catch y'all next one.